Oh, come on, you gotta clap your hands with me. If God has been good to anybody in this room, I need you to get out your seat, get on your feet, and help me give him the praise that he deserves. God has been good. The Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. Come on, help me ask you to sing this. Say, Lord, you are good. Say, Lord, you are good, say that. People from every nation. Oh, 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 oh. Say that we worship. Say hallelujah. For who you
Taylor Woods, and uh, this is our Black Student Union. Can we please give them another round of applause, please? So, just to give you a little bit about myself, because I've never been up here to speak during chapel whatsoever, but um, I play volleyball here, and um, <laughs> there's my girls back there. Um, I'm a sophomore, and this morning I'm just going to lead you guys into the scripture reading and then pray over Dr. Kelly before he comes up to speak to you guys, if that's all right. All right, so today's verse is 2 Corinthians 5, 14, 14 through 17, and it reads, For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live shall no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view, Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, and the new is here. This is the word of the God for the people of God. And before Dr. Kelly comes up, I would just like to pray over him real quick. So if you could just bow your heads with me. Lord, I come to you today and just want to say thank you for blessing each and every one of us with another merciful day to live for you, Lord. I ask that you just give us all understanding and strength and wisdom and understanding life, what we were created for, what we were brought here to do, Lord. And I just ask that you cover us in your blood and you place your hand over any situation that any of us 
are going through this morning, regardless if it's with school, family, personal issues, anything, Lord, I just ask that you place your hand over it right now and just give us your anointing, God. Help Dr. Kelly just preach us this word and give us a, a world and understanding of acceptance, God, and with things that we, we may not know of yet or are just now learning of, God. I ask that you give us all a, a mind of accepting and understanding and strength, God, and you just continue to guide us through your ways. You guide us through today and any other day that we have. God, and I, I just want to say that we love you and we thank you and we appreciate you for everything and all that you do, all that you have revealed and all that you have yet to reveal, Lord. I ask that you just guide and bless Dr. Kelly as he preaches us today and that you just give us, once again, a word of understanding. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. We prayed in the back earlier, and as we typically do on these occasions, we declare God's presence, the promise of God's presence in our midst. And so I'm so thankful to, to share this space with these amazing young men and young women, worshipers of God participants in that thing which we call Hardin Simmons University and leaders into a generation of Joshua's that I'm calling them. They're the ones who are authentically going to change the world and we need to be investing ourselves in them in that way. I have something up here prepared but I'm not going to do it. That's not uncommon for me. My, there are a lot of things that are going on in, in my life right now and in my mind, and I'm, I'm trying to stay focused on the thing that matters today. I sent out correspondence to a lot of my brothers in the community, and um, I sent them a text, I guess it was probably about 6 o'clock last Tuesday morning, and told them I would be speaking in Hardin Simmons Chapel today, and if they can make it, it wasn't about them being here. It was just, hey, many times people say, well, if I had known, I would have. And so you give people an opportunity to, to know, and then if they can, they will. And so I'm thankful for my brother Mike for being, being here this morning um, over at Wiley Baptist Church. And we haven't known each other long, but we know each other well. And, um, and, and that's amazing. Got a friend of mine, Bob Strader, somewhere out there in the audience. And um, I'll talk about him in just a little bit. Nathan Adams is here. I can see him. Um, brother from Hardin Simmons over at Logs Inn and now at Pioneer Drive doing his work there. Amazing prophetic work that he's doing there at Pioneer Drive. And so he was able to make it. And there may be others out in the audience, and I just can't see him. But I'm thankful for that because I wanted you all to see people who I run with. I want you to see them. Because it's important if that prayer is to be realized, that we are to be led into something that is of God, then the eyes of our understanding have to be enlightened. Yes, yes, yes. And we have to know the hope to which we have already been called. It's a gift. The life of God within us right now, it's a gift. And, and, and we have to embrace it and we have to honor it and we have to value it in such a way that those who don't know God will come to know him and that those who do know God will come to know him better. I'm standing here today because of a lot of different people. Some you may and many you may not know, like H.K. Neely. H.K. Neely signed a couple of pieces of paper for me back, back in 1996 when I was told, hey, we don't give that kind of money to people who ain't Southern Baptists. Any of y'all heard that? We don't give that kind of money to people who are not Southern Baptist. H.K. Neely signed two slips of paper, said, get this to the registrar and get this to the bookstore, and you go to class. He opened the door for me that started me on a path and a journey that now a tree that was planted then in 96 is flowering and blossoming, I believe, on this campus. Vernon Davis followed in his footsteps, and I told Vernon Davis, I said, I'm your best advertisement. 
of what Lawson School of Theology is all about. You don't need any printed materials. I'll speak on behalf of this seminary because my life is being changed. Tommy Briscoe, Don Williford, these amazing men of God who have given themselves in a discipline providing pathways for people to fulfill their sense of call in this thing that we call the kingdom of God. Ray Ellis, oh my goodness. Ray Ellis looked at me and he says, I can't believe anybody can score that low on standardized tests. <laughs> but I believe in you. <laughs> and so without Ray Ellis, I'm not even going to laws in school of theology. Amazing people. And men who touched my life and men who shaped my life. Men who guided my life into a certain way. And I'm here in honor and thanks to them. Men who were mentors and they became colleagues. Ronnie Prevost and Jim Heflin. Men like George Knight and James Shields. Names you may not know, but I know them because I'm here because of them. If, if this thing that God has intended for us, this, this sense of community that I talk about, if it is to be realized in us, then, then all of us have to participate in that thing. It has to be real. In other words, this, this idea of remembering who you are, the theology of the Lion King, is amazing to me because all of us have to remember, not just some of us. All of us have to remember that, that, that we do have a past. All of us have a past. Not the people who live 40, 50, 100 years ago have a past. No, their past is our past. Because we're living out of the models and the methodologies that they have created and we're having to realize, is that what God intended? If it is, continue. If it's not, get off the path. That's the life of the Lion King, where, where, where Simba had to understand that just being born a king doesn't make you a king. Come on, somebody. That, that there is a process that, that we have to go through. There, there, there is some formation. There, there is some development that all of us have to experience in order to get from 1996 up until 2019. You've gone through some things. It's what I call memories is just history with skin on it. <laughs> That's all it is. You remember you were there in that space. We made history today because of your skin. And now we can continue to move forward as a university, as a community of faith. I want to talk about this guy, Simba. I think that thing is still on. What does it mean to remember our past? Well, the word itself is a little tricky because for most of us, our past are disjointed. There is no real connectivity to the things that really matter, and so we have to remember them. We've got to put some things back together. There's a lot of material, there's a lot of data here in this file that I, I read over the break in preparing myself for this day. There's a lot of data, it's a, it's, it's a lot of insight, things that we don't really talk about, what's on the books and why those things are on the books and what was being done to people who didn't look like those in the majority culture what was on the books. I'm not going to try to delineate all of that narrative. But what I can tell you, what I found out is anytime another human being dehumanizes another human being, that dishonors the heart of God. Some, something, something has happened to that, in, that, that individual that, that somehow that, that what God has formed has become deformed. Hello, somebody. 
Some, something is, is deformed in us when we can look at another human being and not see what God created in his own image. I think I just said something. Something is wrong with me. When I, when I look at you and, and I devalue you, you and, and I dishonor you and I reject you. No, I, what I'm doing is I'm rejecting the God who created you because if he created you, guess what? He also created me. So to reject you is really to reject myself. So I don't really have a problem with you. I got a problem with me. I got to get me together. Hello, somebody. I know we texting and tweeting and doing homework assignments right now, but all eyes on me. This is a moment. We got to remember that history. We got to put some things back together. And then we can renew that history. See, my past comes with pain. Say it with me. My past comes with pain. I, I don't get to live a pain-free life. I know I may desire a pain-free life, but I don't get to live pain-free. There, there is a cost for us becoming fully human. It's, it's like Pinocchio, is it not? Pinocchio wanted to be a real boy. But there was a process he had to go through. Be brave. Be truthful. And be honorable towards somebody else. In other words, do something for somebody other than yourself. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. My past comes with pain. And so there has to be a renewing of my history. Check this out. Not a denying of my history. The, the amazing thing about being in this space, the amazing thing about sharing in this worship space today is I have a lot of friends. I, I tell people all the time, and I just kind of flip the narrative and say, you know, I got some white friends too. <laughs> you, know, you know how folks say that in the majority culture? Oh, I got some black friends. You know what I'm saying? And, and so I, I flip it back on you. <laughs> I got some white friends too. You know, but the amazing thing about my friends is we can keep it real. We can keep it real. If we're not there, we're not there. But if we are, we can keep it real. We can talk about stuff. Who do you have in your life right now? You can talk about stuff. I'm not talking about somebody that looks like you. Who do you have in your life right now that you can talk about? Stuff. Oh, I know it's happening on the campus because Dr. Fink said it off last week. Yeah, if anybody was in this space on last week, you left out of here limping. You know what I'm saying? Not because somebody stepped on your toes, but because they knocked your hip out of socket. She knocked your hip out of socket. And so we got folks walking around campus like, that move right there, right there. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's going to be hard to follow, but yeah, I'm with her on this. My past comes with pain. That is my reality. And I'm going to have to learn how to share my life meaningfully with people who are not like me. And it's okay. Because the goal isn't to be right or wrong. The goal isn't, isn't to be good or bad. The goal is to be real and relevant. Because if we can all keep it real, then we can all be responsible for what God intends to do. But there must be a reimagining of my future. I'm not living for the day. I'm living for these young women and young men who are here, who've come to Hardin Simmons for whatever reason, I don't know, for whatever reason, they chose to come to Hardin Simmons. And this is what I always tell my students of color. Hey, the amazing thing about you choosing Hardin Simmons is now Hardin Simmons must choose you. I think I just said something. It's the amazing thing is not that you chose Hardin Simmons. Now, Hardin Simmons must choose you. And to choose you is to honor you. And to choose you is to value you. And to choose you is to integrate you into that thing that we call Hardin Simmons. To give you a place at the table. 
to give you space in the leadership and the responsibility, to give people who are coming on Hardin Simmons campus for a visit on a, a Cowboy Friday to see somebody who looks like you. We have to reimagine our future. And that future is very inclusive. You belong here. You have space here. You have place here. We want you here. So then the question is, how do you do it? I think that's always the issue. Paul said it this way. It begins with love. There is no other way. I can see my sister Candace sitting right here. This is amazing. This beautiful woman of God. This amazing sister. And I have so much respect and regard for you and what you do. I'm honored by your presence here. You know, Dr. Garland and what, and what she's doing. And that, that amazing work of transforming, engaging the lives of students. Dr. Craver, this amazing young lion. I don't like him all the time. You know what I'm saying? Because he makes me try harder. And sometimes I just want to be lazy. And I see him doing the thing, and I'm like, get up and go, because Craver's going to be doing the thing. And so you, you got to have people in your life like that. Or Kamisi, you matter. We had that conversation. You matter. But see, what we have to understand when the three of us have already talked, this is our space. This is our space. It could have been anybody else. But it's us. It's us. And so when they look at you, when they listen to you, they think about me. When they look at me and talk to me, they think about Craven. Look at Craven and think about Craven, they think about you. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's us. And the way we value and honor and respect each other in the things that we do. Not in the presence of one another, but when you're not there. Then the Joshua's can see, oh, that's how it's done. We love each other. We have to love each other. And we have to care about each other. For the love of Christ constraineth me. It changes me. It changes me. It changes me to look at my past and embrace my pain. It changes me to imagine a future. Not because I reject what has been, because I embrace it. Backwards sometimes is the only way forward. Are you willing to go there? That's what Dr. Fink said on last week. She said, I know, yeah, I know, I know we late for class. She said last week, I know we late for class. I know we late for class. That's, we're going to be late for class today. I mean, you know what I'm saying? He ain't just a preacher. He a black preacher. We're going to be late for class. And you can, you can tell them, say, Dr. Kelly was up there talking, so, I mean, hey, I'll deal with it. I'm a big boy. <laughs> Love has to matter. Your life has to matter. All of us have to matter in that thing that God is doing. Because one died that all should live. Think about that phrase. One died that all should live. There, there, there's so much in this little folder that I researched about the things that have happened in the American society. It will blow your mind. That how we can build a nation not on religion or democracy, but how we can build a nation on economics. And in the economic system, people really don't matter. Their utility matters. What can you do for me? I'll never forget when LeBron James left the Cleveland Cavaliers for the first time. And the owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers said publicly to a human being, I own you. Wow. 
I'm not talking about 1832. I'm not talking about 1877 or 1924. I couldn't believe it. That a human being would dare think of himself in relationship. Maybe he didn't see LeBron as a human being. Maybe he saw him as a product to make me money. Love has to change it all. He died not for some, but for all. That those who live should not live unto themselves, but unto him who died for them and rose again. That's the future that I want to imagine. What does it look like for us to live our full humanity? That, that sense of us that, that it sees in others a greatness, a quality, a capacity, a gift. Because what I found out, the more that I lose myself in other people, the more I discover myself. So in reality, I need you. Jeremy, you got that at the end? Can we do Hezekiah Walker? You got that at the end. We almost there. That that thing, that when I look at you and when I engage you and when I think about you, I have to declare within myself before I ever speak it to you, I need you. And so I mentioned James Shields earlier because James Shields told us in our preaching class, he says, if you can't say it in 20 minutes, you didn't say it right. But it never applied to me, I'm just saying. <laughs> It, ne it never applied to me. He, he reminded me a, a year or so ago. He says, you know, I, I never did that to you in the class. I was like, yes, sir, I do, I do realize that. James Cone, the first black theologian that I ever read, Martin Malcolm in America. James Cone said, if you say it, you ought to say it with conviction. That's the deal. And James Brown said this, if you say it, you ought to say it loud. I think that's where we are. That if we can go back and remember our past and renew our present, we can reimagine a future that eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor has entered into the heart of humankind, what God has already prepared for us at Hardin Simmons. That somehow us, we at Hardin Simmons, we're ready to change the world. Yeah. But it starts right now. Yeah. It starts right here. Enrolled. Yeah. It starts in your dorm room. Yeah. It starts in the pod. Yeah. It starts over at Gilbert's. Yeah. It starts down in that basement. Yeah. But check this out. It starts on the way to class. Yeah. Just passing each other, somehow making eye contact that I honor your humanity. Yeah. Yeah. Because somehow the grace of God, the gift of God that is me is tied up in you. Yeah. And I got to tell you, I need you. And I got to mean that. So I'm going to say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Ooh, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm going to say it loud. It's been a long time coming. But I'm here now. Because I was always playing the role of the one who was conciliatory towards others. I didn't want to offend nobody. I didn't want to upset nobody. I didn't want to disappoint nobody. But what I didn't realize, the more I was trying to help them, I was hurting me. I was hurting me. I didn't realize it, but some things have happened in my life over the last few years. And I realized that first love is the greater love. Hello, somebody. You got to go there with me. Now, we can't love our neighbors until we first learn how to love ourselves. I got to love me, and my wife says, all of me. 
I got to love me and all of me. And so when I say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud, I'm honoring the God who created me like this. I am somebody. It may not mean much to somebody else, but to me, when I look in the mirror in the morning, I am somebody. I may not live where you live, but to me, I am somebody. I may not have what you got, but to me, I am somebody. I may not take my vacations where you take your vacations, but to me, I am somebody. I may not know the folk that you know and go to places where you go, but to me, I am somebody. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. We got to believe in ourselves before we can believe in anybody else. Say it loud. I'm a Latino and I'm proud. Say it loud. I'm an Asian and I'm proud. Say it loud. You see what I'm saying? I'm Mexican American and I'm proud. Say it loud. You got to love yourself. How about this? Say it loud. I'm a woman and I'm proud. You got to love yourself before you can love anybody else. This is the work that we've been given. And this is the place where it must be revealed. And how about this? This is the moment. We'll never get this moment with these again. And so as my man Jerry, where Jerry, 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 you know how we do, Jeremy. You should have been playing like two minutes ago. We go back to when Jeremy was about like this high, banging on the keyboards at a, at a piano, like, get that boy off the piano and look what he's doing now. Give him a hand, y'all. <laughs> Stand to your feet. You may or may not know this song, but you don't need to know the song. What I need you to do is to believe in what we're about to say. You look at that person next to you and you tell them, say, I need you. Tell them, say, I need you. I need you. You ready? You got it? Put your microphone. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. Agree with me, we're all a part of God's body. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important. I need you to survive. Come back up on stage. Come back up on stage. Say it again. I need you. Come on. I need. You need me. We're all. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is his will. Come on. Come on, Craver. Come on, Craver. Come on. It's a moment. Come on, Mike. Come on. Come on, Nathan. Now come on with me. Come on, Michael. Come on, Mike. Come on, David. Come on, David. Come on, David. Come on. To me, I need you to survive. Say it. Pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words. I need you. I need you. I pray for you. You pray for me. Come on. I need you to. So I won't harm you. Come on, Candace. Come on, come on. Come up here, Candace. Come on. 
Come on, Melissa, come up here. Come on, that's my girl. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. Home you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to. It is his will, yeah. to him who is well able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think unto our God the only wise and true God be glory honor dominion and power world without end by Christ Jesus let us all say Amen. you are dismissed yeah, I'm awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Jesus.